In this video, I want to provide an example of how we can interpret OLS geometrically. So imagine that we have a really simple regression model, which is essentially we just have in, in non-matrix form, we just have the our dependent variable y, let's say yi, is equal to a constant beta naught plus some random error ui. Okay, so how can I represent this in matrix form? Well, let's assume that we have a vector of our dependent variable is y. And let's say for this particular example, we only have two observations. So we have the value of y for the first person and the value of y for the second person. Well, then we can write that this is equal to x times beta, where beta here normally represents a vector. But in this example, where we've only got one independent variable, essentially, we don't really have any independent variables. We only have a constant. So beta is just beta naught in this example. And then finally, we have our vector of our residuals uh, u here, or, or errors u rather. Okay, so what's contained in x? Well, we can think about x is in this example, just containing ones, because essentially all we want is we want y to be equal to beta naught plus the respective component of u for each of the two examples. Okay, so how can we think about this situation geometrically? Well, we can draw out our sort of space here. So we, we're dealing with two observations here. So we're going to be dealing with two dimensional space. And let's assume for sake of argument that y1 and y2 are equal to the points 2 and minus 1 respectively. So we can think about the 2 as being represented by this first axis here. So let's say the point 2 is somewhere like that. And the point minus 1 is somewhere along the second axis. So the vector y is that which joins the origin with this point. So this is the vector y here. Okay, so that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get as close to y as possible. Uh, and we know that least squares is gonna get as close as it can, given that we only have, in this example, we don't really have any independent variables. So what's the space which is spanned by the independent variables in this example? Well, it's just the space which is dictated by this column vector here, because we've only got one column vector, that's just a vector, and it's the vector 1, 1. So we can represent the vector 1, 1 as just going out from the origin, if I choose a different color, goes out from the origin to the point 1 and 1. So it's going to look something like that. But essentially what we're doing is beta naught, what, what the role of beta naught is here is either to increase the length of this vector, so to extend it out out that way if beta naught is greater than one, or if beta naught is less than zero, then it's gonna flip sign, so it can also go anywhere in the sort of opposite direction as well. So the column space of our independent variables in this example is really just a line, it's a one dimensional line because we've only got one independent variable. If we had two independent variables, it would represent a plane in 3D space. And we can think about least squares as trying to identify some point along this line which is as close to y as possible. And what do we mean by as close to y as possible? Well, essentially what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to choose a value of beta naught such that it minimizes the sum of, if we think about the two points, we're gonna have y1 minus beta all squared is the distance um, from y to some point on the line which is specified by beta. Because if you think about it, the if we multiply our 1, 1 by beta naught, that's just gonna be beta naught. So actually I should put a beta naught then. So anywhere, let's assume that our solution looks something like this. So this distance here on the sort of first axis is gonna be beta naught, and similarly, it's gonna be the same on the second axis, it's also gonna be beta naught. So it's gonna minimize that square distance plus the square distance between y2 and beta naught because essentially we're minimizing a Euclidean distance. And if we do the maths here and we differentiate with respect to beta or beta naught, then we find that we have minus two y1 minus beta naught, minus two y2 minus beta naught, and we set that all equal to zero because we're trying to minimize the distance. And predictably, if we go through that, we're gonna find that beta naught is gonna be the mean of the two observations. So y1 plus y2 over two 
which we could have guessed anyway if we thought about this regression model um, a little bit more, because essentially there's not going to be a value of beta naught which guesses y better than the sample mean in this example. Okay, for the example of 2 minus 1, what does that mean it's going to be then? Well, in the example of 2 minus 1, the estimator of beta naught is just going to be equal to 2 minus 1 all divided by 2, which is just going to be equal to a half. So beta naught equals a half, so it's roughly as I've drawn it on this diagram here. And you can see that from this diagram here, the point on this sort of graph here, which is represented by the vector in the previous video we referred to as mu, mu is the vector along the column space of x, which is as close as possible to the vector y. And note that we can't lie anywhere off that particular vector because then we would need more independent variables. And also note that in this example, the vector y minus mu hat is always going to be orthogonal to the column space of x, because if it wasn't orthogonal, we could actually get closer to y in terms of Euclidean distance.